So let's go ahead and talk about solving multi-step inequalities. So remember that we follow the same steps to solve inequalities as we do to solve equations. The only thing you have to keep an eye on is those situations when you are undoing multiplication or division by a negative number. All right, so let's jump right in and take a look at this first example here. So we've got three times k minus five plus nine k is greater than or equal to negative three. So our first step is we have to distribute here. So three times k is three k. And then three times negative five, that is negative 15. And then we bring down the rest of the inequality. So plus nine k is greater than or equal to negative three. All right. So our next step here is we can see that we have here like terms. I have a positive 3k here and a positive 9k here. So I could combine these like terms and 3 plus 9 is 12. So this gives me 12k minus 15 is greater than or equal to negative 3. My next step in trying to get k alone, trying to isolate k is to undo this negative 15. So I have to add 15 to both sides. These cancel out. On the left, I have 12k. On the right, negative 3 plus 15, that's positive 12. And I have my greater than or equal to. And then finally, my last step is to divide both sides by 12. So my solution is k is greater than or equal to one. And I encourage you as I do this video, before I solve the inequality, pause it and see if you can do it. All right, so let's go on to the second example here. Again, you see in the beginning here, we have to distribute. So negative four times positive one D is negative four D. Then we do negative four times positive five. That's negative 20 and we bring down the rest of the inequality. So we have your negative 3D is greater than eight. Then again, you can see here that I have the opportunity to combine like terms. I have a negative 4D and a negative 3D. And those can combine to become a negative 7D because same sign, add them together and keep the sign. So we have now negative 7D minus 20 is greater than 8. Next step in isolating our variable d is to undo this negative 20. So I'm going to add 20 to both sides. These cancel out. On the left, I have a negative 7d. And on the right, 8 plus 20 is 28. Now, this is an example of the situation I was talking about before. As you see here, I have to undo multiplication by a negative 7. So I have to divide both sides by negative 7. So the fact that I have to undo multiplication by this negative 7 here means that when I answer this inequality, I'm going to have to reverse this inequality symbol. So negative 7 divided by negative 7. Yeah, that's one, so I end up with D on the other side, on this side. On the right side, 28 divided by negative seven, that's negative four. And since I had to undo multiplication by a negative number, this inequality reverses from being a greater than to a less than. Okay, two more examples. So this one is has a lot of stuff going on, but it doesn't make it any more difficult. There might be more steps, but it's still the same process that you've already practiced over and over. So what's our first step here? Distributed property. So two times 10 is 20. And then my next step, two times positive two X, that's positive four X. And we bring down the rest of the equation. All right, next we look to see if we could do any combining of like terms. We see here that we can, we have a positive 20 
and a positive 3 on the right hand side that combines to be a 23. So on the right side I have 4x plus 23. And now as you can see we're in one of those um, variables on both sides situations. So just like with equations we want to eliminate the variable of lesser value because it's just going to make life easier for us. So we're going to get rid of this negative 3x on the left side. The way we're going to do that is we're going to add 3x to both sides. These x's cancel out here to the left, leaving me with just a negative 5 is greater than or equal to 4x plus 3x, that is 7x plus 23. Next, in order to isolate x, I need to undo this plus 23, and I'm going to do that by subtracting 23 from both sides. These 23s cancel each other out. On the right, I have 7x, and on the left, same sign, add them together, keep the sign, I have a negative 28. Last step here, I want to divide both sides by 7, to undo this multiplication by 7. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7, leaving me with an x on the right hand side, and negative 28 divided by 7 is negative 4. You might be tempted to think that I have to reverse, that you have to reverse this inequality because of the negative 4, but remember we only do that if you're undoing multiplication or division by a negative number, and these are positive 7s. So there is no reversing. However, we want our, our answers, our solutions to an inequality to be read to show how the variable is related to the number. So we want the variable to be on the left hand side. So when you solve an inequality like this, where the solution has the variable on the right hand side, what you're going to do is just take the whole thing and just flip it around, the entire answer and flip it around. That means now I'm going to put my x on the left hand side, my negative 4 on the right hand side, and I'm going to flip this around too. Now before you're tempted to think that this is actually a different statement, it's the exact same statement. If negative 4 is greater than or equal to x, then x is less than or equal to negative 4. One way you could check to make sure that both of these are the same is if you see the open side of the inequality is facing the negative 4 for both of these statements. But this statement is the one that makes more sense when you're giving the solution of an inequality because when you read it correctly, x is less than or equal to negative 4. You are giving the relationship between the variable x and then the number negative 4. Okay, one final example. Here we see that we have variables on both sides and we have distributed property. So let's go ahead and work this out. So negative 3 times w, that's negative 3w. And negative 3 times negative 3, that's positive 9. Copy down the rest of the inequality. And you see that I have here negative 3w plus 9 is greater than or equal to 9 minus 3w. And if you're paying close attention, you might see something interesting here. Both sides of this inequality are actually the same. They both have a negative 3w and they both have a positive 9. So you might recognize this from when you learn how to solve equations with variables on both sides. Let's just go ahead and finish it off. So I am going to get, I have to eliminate one of these variables. They're both negative 3w, so I end up adding 3w to both sides. And if you remember what happens here, the variables end up canceling each other out on both sides. And I end up with this statement. 9 is greater than or equal to 9. <clears throat> so, is 9 greater than or equal to 9? Yes. This is a true statement. Okay? And as you might remember from equations with variables on both sides, this is something called um, that the solution is all real numbers or infinitely many solutions. And basically what that means is in this inequality any 
value that you choose for the variable w would make this a true statement. Now the difference between this and equations is in equations, you need both sides to be the same number. But in inequalities, that doesn't have to be the case. All you need is for it to be true. So I can work out an equation very similar to this one and end up with something like 12 is greater than or equal to nine. Well, that's a true statement. And that also gives me all real numbers or infinitely many solutions, because it's still a true statement, okay? Or on the other hand, if I work out a problem like this, similar to this, where the variable gets canceled out on both sides, but I end up with an untrue statement. For example, I end up with something like negative four is greater than seven. Well, we know negative four is not greater than seven. So this is a false statement. That's when you have an inequality where the answer, well, where there's actually no solution. All right. I hope this video helps you to understand solving multi-step inequalities.